Before we get into this next video, make sure that y'all hit my like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and drop a comment and let me know y'all thoughts after you watch the video. So what y'all looking at right here is Terrence Bud Crawford's brand new mansion that he building. Bud Crawford, he finally took the Errol Spence fight and he made a whole lot of money. He made way more money than he's ever made in his whole entire career. It was said that Bud made 20 plus million dollars and that's not even including all of the sponsorship money that he got adding on to the 20 plus million dollar that he got from the purse and the back end money from the Errol Spence fight. So man, he got paid because we know the biggest payday that Bud had made before the Spence fight was I believe six million dollars and that was in the fight with Sean Porter. He had made six million dollars and we know that because in the lawsuit when he sued Bob Arum for discrimination it had all of his paydays in that lawsuit. So the 20 plus million that he made with the PBC in the Errol Spence fight was way more than he ever made at top rank. Shit, if you want to keep it a hundred, that's three and a half times more than he ever made at top rank. So man, he came away like a fat rat and he's spending wisely. Now I watched the interview a while back with Terrence Bud Crawford, man. And y'all know I'm not the biggest Bud Crawford fan, but I gotta give respect where respect is due, man. He's earned his money through the sport. He's done what he had to do to get where he's at. And I like to see it, man, because he's raising the family and he deserves it, right? But I watched the video a while back with Bud Crawford, the interview that he was doing, and he talked about all of his real estate investments. And I remember Bud saying that he has over 40 something properties that he's invested in real estate, man. So Bud ain't no dummy. You know what I'm saying? We all know that he ain't no dummy by how he did Errol Spencer in the negotiations. You know what I'm saying? That man got 50 50. He got to walk out last. I mean, he did something bad to Errol Spence during them negotiations, and he got everything that he didn't deserve. But, hey, it paid off, because at the end of the day, he got the W. So if he had did all of that and lost, that would have been real, real bad. You know what I'm well, it wouldn't have been that bad, because he still got paid. You know, EJ got paid. Both of them got paid at the end of the day, but, man, I like to see this, right, man? And this is what y'all looking at. This mansion right now, this is Terrence Crawford's first ever mansion. Now, you would think that Bud would be living in the mansion right now, you know, with all six kids that he have. You would think that he got a big family. He'd be living in the mansion. But Bud said, man, he still is living in the same house that he ever bought when he got his first big check. And it's a regular house, four bedroom house, you know, good size, but it ain't no mansion. It's just a regular house. So Bud was very smart with his money. He didn't go out splurging and spending a whole bunch of money. What he did is he invested his money into real estate. You know, very smart. A lot of fighters don't do that. They get money and they blow it on jewelry and cars and all type of unnecessary shit and bad business moves. And before you know it, they broke. So one thing we can say about Bud is we don't ever have to worry about him being broke ever in life. You know what I'm saying? And he just solidified that even more with that big payday that he got from Al Heyman and Errol Spence in them. You know what I'm saying? From taking that fight. But imagine where Bud Crawford would have been if he had got with Al Heyman in them a long time ago. He was being hard-headed. He wanted to stay with top rank. He didn't want to go over to Al Heyman in the PBC. He was shitting on Al Heyman in the PBC. But at the end of the day, they proved him wrong. And he got to see that the real money was over there on the PBC. Remember when Bo Mack was running around talking about ain't nobody making as much money as Bud, Bud making this and Bud making that. And Errol Spence was laughing at Bo Mack. He said, man, let's compare bank statements. Let's compare my bank with his bank and we gonna see who got more money. Errol Spence was laughing at that man like, man, we getting a whole lot of money on, over here on PBC. 
and that was back when Errol Spence was still active before the car accident. You know, he was laughing at that shit that Bo Mack was saying, running around talking about Errol Spence is living check to check, and all them PBC fighters is broke. Crawford was getting more money than everybody over on PBC. Man, them PBC boys were getting paid. They were getting that back end money. You know what I'm talking about? And Bud, he didn't know nothing about no back end money. Bud Crawford later came out and said that he was only getting 6% of the pay-per-view buys anytime that he went on pay-per-view. 6%. And then Bob Arum was saying that he wouldn't get no back end because Bob was saying that he was left in the red every time that he put Bud Crawford on pay-per-view. But if Bud had been over on the PBC fighting the Keith Thurmans, the Errol Spencers, the Danny Garcias, and whoever else they had on that roster, Bud would have been getting paid, paid. But he ain't want to listen, you know. But in the end of the day, you know, he got what he got now, but he would have a whole lot more if he had got with the PBC. Now, he was on the shelf with top rank anyway. He was still only fighting once a year. So if people say, well, the PBC would have put him on the shelf and he only would have been fighting once a year. He was only doing that with top rank. So, I mean, he would have been getting a lot more money. But like I said, I like to see him doing well. You know, um, I like to see a black man being able to do well and provide for their family like that. And Bud, man, he not no dummy. A lot of people thought he was just a dummy for a long time. And he far from that. And he's showing it. I can't wait to see what this home looks like after he gets done building it. You can see it's on a lot of acres of land. And I remember Bud talking about that he was going to build a big home, a big mansion on acres so his kids can have everything that they need right there on all of his own land. So, man, I love that. But one thing that I noticed from Bud when he was doing these interviews, talking about the financial moves that he's made, Bud is very, very cheap. And now that he done bought this big mansion, he gonna want another huge payday like he got from Errol Spence to recoup that money back. But it's like that. He real petty and real cheap when it come to bread. And this is what he said himself. With Bud, it's all money in. He ain't trying to see nothing go out without him getting it right back in. And that's how he should be. That's how the wealthy people are in life, right? All money in. But... He looking for at least one more big money fight before he hang it up. And that's why he was trying to get that Canelo Alvarez payday. I continue to tell people that him wanting that Canelo Alvarez fight is just for a huge payday. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's all. But that's not going to happen. He not going to get a Canelo Alvarez fight. But he still got that Errol Spence fight. And now that we see that EJ, he's not looking in tip-top condition right now, I guarantee you that Bug's going to try to make that happen as soon as possible. You know what I'm talking about? But he already got one up on Errol Spence. And Errol Spence in his head, he wants to prove that at least he can compete with Terrence Bud Crawford and make the fight a tough fight. You know what I'm talking about? He got to want to prove that. So we probably going to be seeing a rematch eventually. I don't see Bud stand on this 147-pound demands because who else is he going to go fight? If he's saying that he's not willing to fight Charlo, if he's saying that he's not willing to fight Jerron Boost Ennis, if he's saying that he's not willing to fight Keith Thurman, if he's saying that he ain't even willing to fight Danny Garcia, and we know that Danny Garcia shouldn't even be in the talks because Danny Garcia damn near retired. He got one foot out the sport already anyway. But if he's saying he's not willing to fight none of these other fighters, he damn sure ain't going to make no money like this fighting no Tim Zoo. You feel me? So Errol Spence is really his only option. So let's see what go down. But once again, salute to Terrence Bud Crawford for being a great business mind, for setting his family and his kids to be successful throughout their whole life and for achieving generational wealth with the business moves that he's making. Anyway, y'all drop some comments in the comment section. Let me know how y'all feel about this whole thing. Let me know what y'all think this mansion is going to look like when he gets done building it. Make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and y'all already know how I do. Tango talking that boxing again, and I'm gone. Brick slip, roll with me, catch a contact. High definition, popping, flipping out the armrest. See, I'm a rider, dipping in the catalog. Just got it fitted on some shit I need a ladder for.